quite frankly, the far right element of Canada is actually taking over the Conservative Party today. Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. We're back to question period today, and we are very excited to get to this one because we learned that one of our viewers got a bingo on the question period bingo card, so this should be a good one. Let's get into it. Questions are held. Oral questions. The Honourable Member from South Surrey, White Rock. Breaking news, Mr. Speaker. Rent spiked in October at the highest rate in 40 years. Rents up, taxes up, prices up, interest rates up. This Prime Minister's reckless spending is causing pain. Scotiabank says mortgage rates would be two full percentage points lower if the government would just control its spending. Canadians are at risk of losing their homes when they renew their mortgages. 2% is the difference between making it and breaking them. Will the Prime Minister end his reckless spending so that Canadians can keep their homes? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. The Honourable Member, Mr. Speaker, wishes to talk about Canadians keeping their homes. Let's look at the Conservative record on housing. When the now opposition leader was the so-called Minister of Housing, $300 million were allocated towards housing. How many homes were built? Less than 100, Mr. Speaker. Wow. The record speaks for itself. Across the country, we've signed deals with many municipalities, Kelowna, London, Hamilton, Halifax, Calgary, the list continues. We're going to continue to work with municipalities, with partners across the way, uh, to make sure that we get homes built. This is an obligation, and we are up to the task. Here, here. The Honourable Member from South Surrey, White Rock. Okay, so <laughs> there's another talking point that the Liberals keep trotting out, which is the fact that the Conservatives spent $300 million and only got less than 100 homes built. And Pierre has already debunked this in multiple question periods, so we're not going to go back to it. Um, but the fact that they're talking about the Conservative record on housing, yeah, look at their record on housing. People could afford homes. People could afford rent. Because it cost half as much under the Harper Conservatives while Pierre was housing minister than it does right now. And that was during a housing crisis in the United States that because of the conservative leadership did not make its way up to Canada. And the fact that Trudeau, you know, inherited very low interest rates from Harper and then took advantage of that to borrow all of this money and then plunge Canadians into the poorhouse, it just shows you which one of them was the more fiscally responsible one. Like there's no discussion to be had on that because when Harper left office, people could afford what they needed. People could afford what they wanted. And he set the table for Trudeau to take the next step for Canada. And all he did was shove Stephen Harper's good budget, good credit, good economy, in the garbage. Mr. Speaker, photo ops don't build homes. And when our leader was not the so-called minister, he was the minister, rent was lower, down payments were lower, housing was lower. It was a much more affordable place eight years ago than it is today in Canada. Here at home in a time when Canadians are struggling with the cost of everything, the Prime Minister wants to quadruple the carbon tax. He's just not worth the cost. Will he show some compassion and cancel the NDP Liberals' cruel plan to quadruple the carbon tax on the back of struggling Canadians? Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. In a week where that party has been exposed for what they are, that is, a party that does not stand in alignment with the principles of freedom, they've turned their back on the Ukrainian diaspora and on Ukrainians. It's hard to take anything that side has to say seriously today. But on the matter of housing, Mr. Speaker, 40, $46 billion has been allocated towards housing. And the result is that 2 million Canadians have been housed, they've had homes built, they've had homes repaired, and homes subsidized, Mr. Speaker. We're going to continue this work. Here, here. 
The Honorable Member from South Surrey, White Rock. So if you want to know what happened regard, in regards to Ukraine and uh, the, the Niagara incident, just check out our video yesterday. And that explains exactly what Pierre said and what the media and the liberals are trying to claim that he said. It doesn't line up. So go check out that video. Yeah, that, that explains that and completely debunks it. And the second part is he's trying to say that 2 million Canadians have been housed based on the $46 billion that they've spent. Are you, are you kidding me? How does that even square? Yeah, those numbers don't wash. Like, they've been averaging around 210 to 220,000 homes built per year. That would have taken 10 years to build that many homes. And then he goes on to say, oh, well, you know, subsidized, oh, uh, repaired. What? We're building less homes this year than we did in the 70s when the population was nearly half of what it is today. But like, what is he talking repaired houses? Like, I don't understand that. I really, really don't. Are, are, you, are you seriously trying to scoop off of the, uh, the tax credit that you give people for home improvements? Is that what you're using in that number? It wouldn't surprise me. So there's a story here I literally just found from a website called stories.com. And in regards to uh, the Canadian population growth and, and housing completions, I just need to read the headline. The headline is population growth in Canada is outpacing housing completions by 40%. We're not building enough homes. No. And that's reflected by just doing basic arithmetic when you look at the immigration and refugees incoming to our country every year. No, you need an average of one home for every two Canadians. So if you're bringing a million people in per year, you're going to need half a million new homes. And we're building a fraction of that. And we're already three million homes behind. Mr. Speaker, this is the government that sent turbines to Putin yeah. so he can pump natural gas into Europe and fund his war machine. We should end do dollars for dictators and turn them into paychecks for our people. The Prime Minister gave $15 billion to Stellantis and Windsor without protecting Canadian jobs. $15 billion being used to bring up to 1,600 foreign replacement workers. Let's see the contract. Let's see the details. Will the Prime Minister release the contract, let Canadian workers see for themselves how many jobs are going to foreign replacement workers? Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Yes, Mr. Speaker, what's becoming clearer and clearer every day is that the Conservative leader of the, today is just not worth the risk. Quite frankly, the far-right element of Canada is actually taking over the Conservative Party today. Mega. We saw that, Mr. Speaker, in the actions of all Conservative members voting against the Canada-Ukraine trade agreement. Completely amazing, Mr. Speaker. It shows a lack of leadership. The leader of the Conservative Party is moving it far to the right. Inexcusable, Mr. Speaker, and shame on every Conservative member for joining with You have no idea what you are even talking about. Wow, folks. All right, if anyone is not convinced that an election is coming, um, <laughs> this, is, this is what the Liberals are now stooping to. And I guess we're all far right, everybody, so I don't know whatever that means. They created a poisoned bill, and I guarantee you they knew the Conservatives were going to vote against it, and I guarantee you that they had already planned their talking points prior to putting that bill on the floor. I guarantee you this was going to be their way to try to claw back some of the vote that, uh, that they've lost to the Conservatives. They have nothing else against Pierre, so we might as well throw the Hail Mary and start calling them far right. This is just completely ridiculous now. But it aligns It aligns with the liberal attack ads that have been leading up to this for the last couple of weeks. This is why I'm saying I guarantee you they already had these talking points prepared. 
because in the liberal attack ads, they've they've been saying that Pierre has been stealing the the verbiage from from the far right down in down in the United States, and they've been going through all of this, all of these talking points to try to prove this. Today, the CBC put out a hit piece, essentially saying that, oh well, you know, the U.S. media was reporting that that incident in Niagara Falls was a terrorist attack. And Pierre said, you know, he got his information from the media. It must be the far right U.S. media. Absolutely. Surely. Yeah. So we're probably going to do a video on that, too. So this is where we're at, people. We are in the era of government misinformation and disinformation, and it is in full swing. The Honorable Member for Mégantic l'érable Mr. Speaker, these budget project projections that only a contortionist could appreciate. That's, the, that's a quote from Desjardins about this mini budget. This prime minister has lost all fiscal credibility. Next year, we will be paying $51 billion to service the debt. That's double the amount we're using for national defense and as much as our health transfers. It shows that this prime minister is just not worth the costs. Will the Liberals show some common sense, balance their budget, and help Canadians balance their own budget and be able to put food on the table? The Honourable Minister of Innovation, Mr. Speaker, for those watching us at home this Friday, they know that these Conservatives are just not worth the risk. There is something that's going up here, and that's foreign investment in the country. But the Conservatives don't want to talk about that. Canada is now third in the entire world in attracting foreign investment after the U.S. and Brazil. We have received record investment in the auto sector, the mining sector, in batteries, steel, aluminum. Mr. Speaker, we will continue fighting to make sure that Canada joins the economy of the 21st century. Honorable member for Mégantic l'érable. Um, so I'm sure you've noticed it. We certainly noticed it. That the Liberals finally have a catchphrase that they're trying to use against the Conservatives. But like everything else, they're copying. Them. I was going to say they stole from the Conservatives. <laughs> like they're just not worth the risk. <laughs> like, are you you mean not worth the cost? Well, like how much mental effort did you guys expend stealing that from the conservatives and just changing the last word <laughs> I, I bet you it was trudeau that came up with it i, I bet you it was him <laughs> so not worth the risk okay so the risk of doing nothing is we become even poorer and you run the country even further into the ground well and i don't understand what risk they're trying to talk about like my life was a million times better under stephen harper the economy was a million times better. Opportunity in this country was a million times better. Why would you not vote conservative? That's the question. You you know you can't vote NDP because they've been supporting this government this whole time. That's going to be the the challenge for Jagmeet and the NDP, and they're gonna. <laughs> that's going to be impossible for them to overcome in the election. Yeah, because they've dragged this out longer than it has needed to go. Um, Canadians have suffered longer than we've needed to suffer because of Jagmeet Singh and the NDP. So. You know, you have both of them. And what's so bad about the Conservatives? They want to lower taxes. They want to bring down uh, housing prices. They want to balance the budget, bring down interest rates. Oh, but then we'll have to cut all these garbage programs that we shouldn't have put in in the first place. You know, like $129 million for legacy media. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Well... My colleague should fight more for Canadians. Does he want numbers? Well, we have the fastest inflation in 40 years. Two million people, a record number, going to food bags in one month. Housing costs doubled. Mortgages have increased by 150%. Deposits to buy a house have doubled. Housing overall is 50 to 75% higher in Canada than the U.S. This government should be ashamed. All, of, all experts agree. Liberal spending has made costs go up. When will this government finally tell us when they will return to an accountable, balanced budget? The Honourable Minister of Innovation. Mr. Speaker, what people want in this country, what they need is leadership, and that's what we showed in our mini-budget. Canadians told us two things, two specific things. Help us with affordability and help us with housing, and that's exactly what we're doing with a mini-budget, Mr. Speaker. And what's more, 
we have announced the biggest reform in 30 years of the Competition Act because in this country we want less cons consolidation, more competition, better prices for Canadians. We will continue fighting for Canadians every day. Yeah, but Champlain, um, didn't you say that uh, the grocery stores have already addressed affordability because they came out with flyers before Thanksgiving? That's what you said. And if they want more affordability for Canadians, maybe they should stop running a deficit and stop pumping so much money into our economy. And this is it. But they believe that Canadians want affordability and support. Well, that means that the government should spend even more money, which is going to raise interest rates even higher than they already are, and try and make people even more dependent on the government and less independent. And then they're going to fear monger. It's like, oh, well, if the conservatives come in, they're going to take all this away from you. Yeah, and they've already started that. They're, they're going to cut everything and they're far right. Yep, the fear-mongering has already begun. The Honourable Member for Saint-Jean, Mr. Speaker, the federal government must give to Quebec the $460 million that it has spent to help asylum seekers. This is an area of federal jurisdiction. Quebec is doing much more than its fair share, and now the federal government must do its own work to help with the situation. And not only did the Minister of Immigration refuse, but he actually had the arrogance to claim that he, that too much money had been given to Quebec. He even said that he might be sending the bill to Quebec. Instead of picking fights like this, why doesn't the minister go get his checkbook out so that we can actually help asylum seekers? You know, I seem to recall that the liberal talking point when Pierre was talking about the fact that he was going to not give money to the municipalities unless they actually got houses built, they said that he was picking fights. Well, now the immigration minister is picking fights with Quebec because Quebec is paying for a program provincially that is supposed to be funded federally. Now, you can say what you want about Quebec, but in this specific aspect, they're right. This is a federal program. Why are you why are they being forced to use provincial budget dollars to take care of these people? And you can say what you want about the block, but they do have a few really fiery ladies on the team. And this is one of them. The Honorable Minister of Immigration, Mr. Specker, what I said publicly yesterday is that we need to sit down with Quebec, with our respective finance ministers, so we put all our cards on the table. If we add up all of the excess sums that we included in the Canada-Quebec agreement, we'd see that actually Quebec would, would be the one receiving the bill but that's something that I really hesitate to do in public. I'd much prefer to dis discuss it privately with my colleagues from Quebec because we want to work together for immigrants and asylum seekers. The Honourable Member for Saint-Jean. Mr. Speaker, the Minister spoke about excess monies. Has he ever even met an asylum seeker or an organization that supports them? Because on the ground, no one is going to say that there's too much money for asylum seekers. It's not a matter of too much money. These people don't even have the right to work because they're not getting permits from the federal government. You can't start talking about too much money when people are sleeping in tents during the winter. There's not too much money. There's too much petty politics on the backs of vulnerable people. When will the minister stop playing politics and give the money to Quebec? Well, I think we're starting to see the Quebec platform take shape. Uh, and it comes in the fact of they've been talking about the protection of their language uh, throughout the immigration policies of the, the Trudeau government. And the other main point that they've been driving home is the fact that they're not getting money for housing. And now it's they're not getting money for the actual immigration and asylum seekers that they're that they're seeing. So um, and they're all great points because it sounds like what they're going to do in the province is take all of that and preach to people that, listen, Quebec is is the ones that are taking uh, care of these people and it's supposed to be the federal government, so we're going to be running on this to give more money back to you and the we're going to ensure that the federal government is going to pay their fair share, etc., etc., etc. So um, we're, we're really starting to see that take shape. Um, but and I, I don't disagree with them. Not only that, she brought up a, a very important point. It's valid outside of Quebec as well. Winter is coming. There are so many people living in tents, more than I think we've ever seen before. 
And what is going to happen in the winter? Like, how can we look at people and just be like, oh, well, you know, you're not my problem because you live in a tent and I don't care what happens to you. This is the Canada that Trudeau and the Liberals and the NDP have created. You know, we were having this discussion earlier in the evening uh, before we started recording this with uh, Joe Rampart on his his uh, Twitter platform. And um, he had mentioned that it's, what, four billion dollars per month that this government pays an in interest on our debt roughly it, it's three point something it's but. a lot of money per month every month so that's you know almost four billion dollars that could be going to canadians and instead it's going to bankers and investors and and other people that are not canadians now you know let's just do basic math here so housing rent down payments all of that has gone up virtually 100%, in some cases, 150%. So it's so it's at least double. What else has doubled? The national debt to $1.3 trillion. Justin Trudeau has increased the debt more than every single previous prime minister from 1867 to 2015 combined, everybody. Like, I know we said that before, but just think about that. It's From 1867 to 2015, every single prime minister that has ever borrowed money. That's over 100 years. It's over 150 years. And he, he, he has managed to borrow more in his term than in the previous 150-year history of Canada. Think about that. And the interest on that debt has doubled. So that's taxpayer money that could be going to fund programs for Canadians like healthcare, like dental, like pharmacare, like any other program you can think of. And instead, it's going to investment bankers and and, and instead it's going to service this debt. It's going to people likely outside of this country as interest payments. So, I'm sorry, when you're talking about the conservatives, you know, giving money to their rich buddies, Trudeau, you're literally giving $4 billion per month, and next year it'll be up to $51 billion per year, more than we spent, double what we spent on our military. If that doesn't give people some perspective, I don't know what does. <laughs>